Welcome back, America. Hugh Hewitt in the ReliefFactor.com studio. One of the reasons I miss my, uh, the lowest rated show in the history of MSNBC, the Hugh Hewitt Show, is because Karen Tumulty used to get up early on Saturday mornings and come talk to me. She joins me, though, on the phone occasionally. Follow her at Kay Tumulty, a uh, great writer for the Washington Post. Good morning, Karen. How are you? Just fine. How are you doing? I'm good. Now, I remember quite vividly the Clinton impeachment. I was on the air. I've been on the radio for 20 years. And I have lived the Nixon impeachment for 30 years. I'm the president of the Nixon Foundation. And I, I know when they made a reference to the to the roadmap that Sirica gave today's Washington Post. I know all this stuff. There's a big difference here. I want to know what you think is the difference between Clinton and Nixon and the Trump impeachment proceedings. Uh, well, I mean, this is- these impeachment proceedings really happen so rarely in our history, thank goodness, that, you know, it's it's not like you can take sort of just a, a precedent and then apply it a few decades later. And I think that one of the big differences is the political climate. Uh, uh, that is absolutely true, but I'm actually talking a little bit of nuts and bolts. I read Pat Cipollone's, and I, I've met him once. He's a very good lawyer. And I am struck by one critical difference. When the House is on strong ground vis-a-vis a president concerning an impeachable offense, they go, they bend over backwards to give the president impeachment power and procedural defenses so that what they do will appear to be legitimate in the eyes of the entire country. That is not happening here. It's a kangaroo court that Adam Schiff is running. And I think Cipollone drew a bullseye on the process, and he hit it yesterday. Your, your response. Well, I thought I thought um, and I thought just judging by the opinions of a lot of legal experts that I read that the Cipollone letter was more of a political screed than a the legal than a legal argument. Oh, I, I you've got to read more broadly. I, I, I 100 percent agree that every previous uh, impeachment proceeding extended to the president the right for the minority to impe- uh, to uh, subpoena witnesses. That's because that is the essence of the defense in the House, but, and Bill Clinton okay, did it, but, and Nixon okay, did it. Okay, okay. The, the House itself has changed the rules on issuing subpoenas. Um, as you probably know, in 2015, the Republicans who controlled the House changed the rules on issuing subpoenas and gave committee chairmen the right to issue unilateral subpoenas. A lot of committee chairmen got that right, and they got it in under the Republicans' controlling the House then. There were a lot of Democrats at the time warning that this was something that could come back and bite them. Well, I have no objection and- to that. I thought that was good because you got to get witnesses in. I have an objection to it in the context of impeachment, which is the highest state poker the Republican can play, and that we have two impeachments in our memory, and in both of them, the House bent over backwards to make sure that the chief executive, the only person in America elected across by every American, gets procedural protections. Otherwise, we'll get an impeachment a year. But at the same time, the president is arguing that all of this was based on hearsay, and he is not willing to provide the witnesses to the committee who could give firsthand accounts of what happened. He's not He's not going to play with the kangaroo court. He's going to say, impeach me on not playing because you're not playing by fair rules. And if that's the case, the Senate will badminton you out of here. I think he's actually set this to... Uh, this is Pickett's charge on the part of the Democrats. Mueller failed, so they're going to run up the hill with a kangaroo court impeachment. And I think Trump well, is going I, to be I in a stronger think, position. I think, behavior, well, I think the behavior here is uh, so much more blatantly and clearly improper on the president's part. Basically, you know, shaking down a, a foreign leader to help him in an election is, is a, a kind of— Karen, my friend, boy, do we disagree. Sense. I did not see that. I read the transcript. I don't see it. I do believe Durham is going to find a lot of wrongdoing. I don't think it'll be a Hunter Biden wrongdoing. I think it's going to be the the war against Trump that began at the highest level, the FBI and the IC with the Steele dossier. But, you know, even if you're right, if you're particularly right, let's assume that Karen Tumulty's got it right. If that's the case, why don't the Democrats give the president what he wants, which is the the House Republicans the right to impeach other uh, uh, subpoena other witnesses? Well, I think that I th- and I wrote in my column today that I do think they ought to pass a resolution. So that is not good required. for you. There is no rule that requires it. Um, I think that in part because I think that it would also put the Republicans on record. I mean, they would have to good cast a vote yes. that says, "Do you find something improper here? Do you think there's nothing to see here?" And you know, they could, in the course of doing that, negotiate 
But again, um, I think that, and we've seen, you know, Devin Nunes and in, in his behavior uh, that we've seen in the past is not, you know, he, he goes running to the White House and coordinating with them. Um, Write this down, Karen. You know. Devin Nunes is going to emerge as completely vindicated by the Durham Bar investigation. I mean, we're looking at this from, I, I was on with Al Sharpton on Sunday and Al thought I'd lost my mind. And I said, Al, you just don't, you got to get out of, out of the MSNBC bubble. I love MSNBC. I still work for him. But the bubble is pretty thick right now because I think at least half of America thinks this is the most absurd everything. Last minute to you. Well, I would suggest that our, our, our latest Washington Post poll suggests otherwise. I thought it was 50-50. It was in support of the impeachment inquiry proceeding. It was 58% public support, and that was a huge jump from July when the issue was the Mueller report. Okay, watch that space. 58% ain't enough to pull an impeachment off, as I know from the Nixon and the... 